So I started my third career when I was 15. Back then, I didn't know that I had made such an important decision in my life. I was watching TV. But without my third, I wouldn't have had my second and my first careers. So when it comes to career, there is a critical question that everybody must answer. Should I do a job I love or should I do a job I'm good at? The second option seems to be a good one, right? You build your career on your strengths. But there are two issues. Now, first, you believe you're good, but unfortunately, you might not be good. And second, the sector and the industry that you're in, well, may be undergoing some major and structural changes rendering your expertise obsolete in a short time. So, what to do with our career planning then? In the old days, it was important, almost possible, to have one career and stay with one company for your entire career. In fact, your lifelong service loyalty will be highly valued. Since the 90s, changes have been more rapid, more violent, given the technological advancement and you know, the exponential growth of the economy. In the late 90s, new terms such as restructuring, downsizing, and redundancy became more popular. People were forced to switch their jobs, their companies, and to adapt. According to a CNBC survey done in 2019, nearly half of the respondents uh, indicated they have made a dramatic career shift. Students graduated at the age of about 22. Now they would likely to have a 40 year or longer employment. So how can they plan for a fulfilling and rewarding career when changes could become more and more drastic and, un and unpredictable? When I was 15, my biggest hobby was watching television. For some reason, I enjoy watching TV commercials more than the TV dramas. So I quietly said to myself, I want to make them. I want to create. And then I chose marketing as my major in the university. I didn't know that at that time, that was the golden era of local Hong Kong advertising. After four years with CHK, in my final year, I did not apply for any job other than advertising. I believe I was destined to be a creative guru and made the best ad in Hong Kong and possibly in the world. In May that year, most of my colleagues, most of my classmates, they have confirmed their first job. They got offers from top companies like HSBC, Swire Group, and the government. For me, I had nothing, nothing. Now back in 1990, emails and mobile phones, they did not exist. So I would mail out the application letters and then sit next to my home phone waiting for employer to call me, but still nothing. I panicked and I sent out more letters, more application letters to lesser known smaller advertising agencies. Weeks gone by and there was only silence. I wondered if I should consider some other options in my career. But then I can still remember when I was young, when I was 15, I wanted to make advertising. I wanted to create. So I get, you know, uh, I just did not give up. Finally, a small local agency called me and gave me an interview. I became an advertising copywriter although my salary was less than half of my classmates. But hey, anyway, my career as an advertising creative began. I was lucky enough to have experienced the golden days of Hong Kong advertising in the early 90s. I consider myself more successful in my career, having won some awards in Hong Kong, 
London, and in New York. I was named creative director after just six years of experience as a creative. Well, it was a stressful and demanding job, I can tell you. On average, I worked 16 hours a day, 6.5 days a week. I survived the 1997 and 1999 financial crisis around the world, and uh, I also noticed a structural change in the industry. The emergence of digital media started in the late 90s and picking up pace in the early 2000s. Well, my expertise and my experience and my creativity in advertising were still relevant, but I have an urge to change my career. Now, perhaps the huge pressure and uh, you know, uh, the long hours finally take a toll on myself. Perhaps I wanted to explore and experience something different. So I wanted to look for a second career. But how to find it? I went back to the moment when I was 15 years old. I wanted to create ads. Deep in my heart, there is a yearning for telling people something creating an impact on their life, bringing something new to the world and make people think. I suddenly realized this had always been my ultimate career goal. So I discovered that teaching was a good match. I can tell people something and make them think, hopefully. So in 2003, after surviving the SARS outbreak in Hong Kong, I knew that the time was now. I gave up my career in advertising. That brought me some fame and fortune. I went back to school and pursued my MPhil. And then subsequently, I left Hong Kong for Los Angeles to pursue a PhD in marketing. I returned to Hong Kong in 2000, or 2010 and became an educator. Well, my second career, which is still evolving, is almost completely different from my first. My skills that I learned from my first career is not transferable to teaching, but the underlying principles are almost identical. I convey a message to an audience in a new way, in a creative way, so that they're more willing to accept and hopefully have a minor change in their lives. So what is my third career? In my view, it's everyone's ultimate career to become the person they want to be. This career may take a lifetime to re realize. This one is the last, but the mo most important one. Between your university and your final career, there will be interim jobs, your first, second, or maybe more. So choose the ones that can help you fulfill the last so that you can become who you want to be. You should find a job that you love, but passion must be complemented by your conviction and a strong belief. You're free to choose whoever you want to be, and you must choose, or else the big machines in the society will define you and put you in normal positions. When your skills suddenly become obsolete, well, the world will replace you with someone possessing the new skills. So, self-reinvention will be the new survival skill in the turbulent time of right now. But no matter how you pivot, you must not forget your ultimate goal. There will certainly be times, bad times, setbacks, casting doubt on you, all right? Seducing you to give up. But you've got to be determined, even stubborn because no one knows you better than you do. So, my friends, being and becoming are more important than doing. So start your ultimate career today. Thank you so much.